Right. You're talking about Joe Pegleg Morgan? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. And he was actually the first non-Hispanic member of the Mexican Mafia. Yes. Yeah, you've got, I've got some great photos of him in 1967 at San Quentin with uh, the founders of the Mexican Mafia. And then, you know, he and, and uh, Benjamin Peters, Topo Peters, um, was really Joe's right-hand man. Um, but yes, you're, you're right. He was um, uh, non-Mexican, non-Hispanic. Right. And, you know, years later, uh, there was a movie that came out called American Me. Right. Uh, you watched it? No. Uh, okay. Well, I interviewed uh, Danny Trejo, mm -hmm. who was an affiliate of the Mexican Mafia, yeah. but was not actually part of it. And essentially in the movie, um, you know, they, they showed the leader uh, of the Mexican Mafia getting raped mm -hmm. in juvenile. Mm -hmm. And after that movie came out, um, a bunch of people ended up getting killed. Yeah. They were associated with the movie. Yes. Because, I mean, from what I understand, it wasn't true. And to depict that on a big screen like that really angered the Mexican Mafia. Yes. To the point where e Edward James Olmos, who starred and put the movie together, had a hit on him. And he, he did. And from what I understand, some of the people featured in that movie, like I think, like the, got killed there was because of them being in that movie. Four out here and about, I think, six in prison. Six people got killed over American Me. Yeah, probably about yeah, just being eight. part of it. Yeah, but and uh, it was funny because I remember Donald Garcia, another Mexican m mafia that got out and turned Christian, just straight out said, you know, they were they were talking about no, 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 and he go, yeah, that falls on you, Eddie, you know. So, you know, there's a whole thing. So you know about that? Oh, I do. Yeah. Yeah, that, okay, so what did you hear about that? Well, just that it was an open contract. I mean, um, you know, I had a very good relationship with Joe and other members of the Mexican Mafia, and uh, they were upset about that. Uh, you want yeah. to remember at one point in time that coincides with this movie, uh, Joe had a stroke, um, and that's not widely known. So we had smuggled uh, steroids into the prison to help him contend with that, but he was dealing with... Um, a lot of inside uh, drama, individuals attempting to usurp uh, his standing within the Mexican mafia. So, but yeah, you're, you're right insofar as the movie upsetting the Mexican mafia, it did that. Yeah, I just looked it up while you're talking, 10 people were killed. That sounds about right. Yeah, like 10 people that were used in the production as, you know, uh, you know, either extras or were, were used to, to get, you know, in terms of getting background information and, and so forth. Uh, yeah, it was essentially a bloodbath over that movie. Yes. From what I understand, okay. uh, almost actually um, made a contribution, a financial contribution um, to one of the organizations aligned with uh, the Mexican mafia. And, um, that squashed his contract. Okay, so he basically paid him off. That's what I'm told. Whether or not it's true, I couldn't tell you. But um, my sources, like yours, are, are fair. I mean, was the Mexican Mafia the biggest gang in San Quentin when you got there? Um, biggest Mexican gang, yes. But period, in terms of just raw numbers. Mm, probably, because I'm thinking, you know, the BGF had uh, a fairly substantial um, membership at that time in San Quentin. And so they were pretty strong. Um, and, but I would say it'd be a toss up between Mexican Mafia and the Black Guerrilla family. 